creationists like to point out that the validity of dates obtained using the decay of radiogenic isotopes rely upon a series of assumptions. Some of the most commonly raised assumptions are 1. The constant decay rate of the parent daughter to the daughter isotope is not actually a constant. 2. The rock or mineral has remained close to the external environment and has not lost or gained any daughter or parent atoms. And 3. The initial concentration of the daughter isotopes is either zero or is known. They seem to think that, firstly, these assumptions and many others are enough to completely rubbish the well-understood theories behind the application of isotopes to the purpose of dating, and secondly, that experts in the field of isotope geochemistry are themselves completely ignorant of these assumptions. This is, to be frank, a load of bollocks. These assumptions are very well known to every single person who has taken even an elementary course in isotope geochemistry. They are discussed in depth in every single book on the subject, and are taken into account stringently in every analysis of isotopic composition, rocks or minerals published in the scientific literature. I intend to produce a series of videos going over each of these assumptions, explaining why they are valid, when they are not valid, and how we can know this. In the process, I hope that everyone watching the series will gain a fundamental understanding of how geochemists apply isotopes to unravel the complex history of the Earth and the universe, and also to gain some tools to debunk the plethora of creationist bullshit on YouTube. In the meantime, Anyone interested in learning about geochemistry, cosmochemistry, petrology, thermodynamics, radiometric dating, and a number of other subjects are encouraged to check out this excellent free online textbook written by Professor William White of Cornell University. A link will be provided in the video description. See you soon.